A one, two, three, four. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about why succulents should not be a stressor for us. <laughs> I know everybody is like, um, everybody that I talk to, the one, the people who, um, especially the newbies, and they're just so nervous about succulents. It's like it's almost as if they don't want to buy any more any succulents because they think that um, that because they think that they are going to kill it for, for somehow. And I just wanted to say that, yes, there are succulents that are very, very sensitive. Um, and I will tell you this much, the Echeverias that have the, the really thin leaves are the ones that are very, very prone to um, just sensitivity. Just, it has to, ha it has to have the right, um, it has to have the right soil. It has to have the right condition. It has to be under uh, under shade, um, but indirect sun, like bright indirect light. Uh, and then you have the ones that are dark in color, like the dark prints, the black prints, uh, any any itch of area that's really dark, or even the deep red uh, calanchoes and um, all those uh, succulents that are dark in color are very prone to mealybugs. And so, but most of them are okay under the sun, like direct sun. But however, the mealybugs just really like attack it really badly so um there are succulents that are like that but those are are not the type of succulents that really people buy what people buy most of the time are the ioniums the mostly echeverias i for some reason echeverias are really really popular but i have all kinds of some echeverias and all kinds of ioniums and i just have a whole bunch of variety in my garden <clears throat> this is why i'm able to say what i say because i notice that some some succulents really are a lot sensitive to you know get just they have like a death wish or something it's just so it's not funny but like like the um the string of pearls i was having a problem with before because actually i thought that they were indoor plants and as soon as i put like those trailing plants the string of bananas string of dolphins string of pearls they like to be outside where the weather is just perfect like you get sunlight in the morning or uh you know uh, di bright direct indirect light and also they want to be underneath like an eve or something like that so that they don't get as much water but even though my uh string of pearls string of banana string of uh string of dolphin all the strings and even the purple one i forget the name of it because it's not very popular i mean it's popular but it's it's not you can't get it very easily it's not available. It's not easily available. Like if you go to Home Depot or Walmart or stuff like that, they're just not there. You have to go to like a nursery or even someone like a very customized, uh, you know, succulent growers like me and another person I know in Vallejo. So Vallejo, by the way, is the next town over <laughs> in case you're not from the Bay Area. So, um, those are the ones that, you know, you have to kind of learn the succulents. You kind of have to learn, um, how they respond to the location that you put them. I have a, I have a, a monkey tail that, that I got like two years ago and it only has two 
details, you know, it, it's not prolific. So it's underneath the eave, it's underneath the, the sunshade. So I think I have to move it somewhere where there's, it's going to get more light. Maybe, I don't know, but I'm afraid because that's the only one I have. And uh, if it's doing okay where it's at, you know, at least I know that it's not going to die on me. But it's also not prolifically, you know, growing. However, uh, this is one of the caveats of that. I've had like my uh, my Echeveria uh, lipstick, the Korean lipstick that I got a long time ago. I got it when it was this small and then it just stayed small and then it was growing a little bit every year, a little bit, a little bit. And then all of a sudden, bam, two years ago, boom, it just like the, it was winter and then spring and then it just got big, so big that, you know, I had to move it into in the ground. It's out there in the front now. Um, it also has a little baby, which is really cool because I know and I'm going to repot that in a different pot because, you know, I, I just wanted to see it grow. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, but I can't do that until the fall, which is really close because it's already almost the end of August. So, uh, but my point here is that let's not get too nervous about succulents. There are succulents out there that are going to be very prolific. It won't be very picky. As a matter of fact, I have Ioniums and I'll show you this. I'll show you all of these plants that um, will be okay, even though you cut them and I'll show you when I cut them. And um, also the Kalanchoes that I chopped up because they were just growing so much. Uh, I think I showed this in one of, in the uh, Pet Cemetery one, the, the Pet Cemetery video that, that I just put out not too long ago couple downloads or uploads ago um they're still sitting out there and they're still alive i mean yeah because they're not attached to the soil and they're not getting the nutrients so they're trying to take it from their leaves which um when you know the other day i repotted most of them because i'm gonna sell them but before I do that, I, I need them to have their roots um, firmly in the ground, in their pots, so that they can at least have a running start. And already, um, after it's been sitting on the chair, because <laughs> I because I thinned all my, my plants out, it's been sitting on the chair for, oh my gosh, close to two weeks. And the other day when I repotted it, they're still alive of course that they're already healed over so um i put it in the pot a week ago in each other's pot and or in individual in individual pots and today i just checked them today and they're just um starting to get i guess they started to grow roots already so they're now starting to plump up again i've been watering them not too much because it's still summer although here where where we're at it you know it's it's kind of like it's re it feels like the fall because we're just getting really mild summer so yeah and um so i'll show you the ones that it's like a, the blue chalk ones are the ones that that um will survive no matter what and then i have ioniums too that um i i don't know what the name is but it's i know it's an ionium i i thinned them out i have to redo that side over there because it's just i have so much to do guys i just sometimes i wake up in the morning and i'm like i don't know what to start with i know i got all these things i need to do but i don't know where to start because there's just so much and um also so the ioniums the ioniums are okay um they're out there um even though it's their dormant dormant season which is the summer once the fall comes around and the winter comes around they're just gonna just start boom booming 
and uh, those are the ones. And then also the elephant bush. Elephant bush is also one of the ones that, you know, I can tr I can cut them and, you know, they heal over, they become really hard and then they just stay alive. And uh, it's just amazing to me. But there are Echeverias also, not very plump, not very um, bushy and or prolific and they will stay okay even before like i had an echeveria i forgot that it was out there and i just saw it yesterday <laughs> and i'm like oh no <laughs> i need to and i still haven't um repotted or planted it but i will i promise i will uh and then i then you have all these the, the fat leaved echeveria fat leaves echeverias are the ones that also can survive even if you know you behead them and you just um, leave them out to heal uh, you know they'll they'll survive and they won't die right away and actually they don't die because it's it's like now it's their dormant season you cut them you you, you cut them up and it heals over and then they just feed from their leaves so nothing to be stressed out about you know i know that it's succulents you know and and i believe that the reason why people are having such a hard time with succulents is because we want to treat them as if they're the same as our maybe our um house plants and you know our heart but even my house plants i you know you just can't overwater them i think they're happier they're happier. You have to err on the side of less water than more water. And um, you'll see, I mean, it'll tell you, They the, the indoor plants are just fantastic because they just tell you that, you know, they're, that, they're, they, that they need water because they'll, you know, kind of poof and be sad, you know, and then you just put a little. And how I water my indoor plants is I just give it a little water so I know that it moistened the soil I don't drench it you know I don't drench it and forget about it for like a week no I just moisten you know the the soil I just enough water to moisten the soil because nobody wants to be over like even if we start swimming and then we sit in the water for too long our our um skin will wrinkle up you know it, nobody wants to be in the water for that long especially if you're not a fish so, so um, that's one of the things that, one of the reasons why succulents die is because we think, oh, you know, we're so compassionate about um, living things. And so we're like, oh no, they need water. And then they're, when they're droopy because they got so much water, it's like, oh no, they're drooping because they need more water. So what do we do? We put more water. So that's one of the things. And then also direct sun not all of them like direct sun there are some that will be okay like okay i can bake you know i can sit out here in the sun and just bake but i'm not really happy about it but I, you know i'll be okay so there are plants that are like that but then there are plants that just will definitely like uh, -uh no mm -mm. get me out of this heat get me out of this direct sun this is not um it's not happening you know you can't roll at me like this just leave me alone just put me under the shade those are the types of plants that will die if you put them in direct sun but uh, there's a lot like ioniums like the sun not all the ioniums like the sun calanchoes are pretty much sun loving uh those uh um the ones that i just had like those hairy ones i for i forget i i don't know all the the, the names of these plant plants but um there some of them are sun loving there are a lot that are oh the sedum sedum rebruticum which is the um pork and beans or the um uh, jelly beans those they those like the sun they will survive in the sun they will deepen in color and they will look like they're they get they got hard and then they're less plump but once uh fall comes around or spring comes around they just puff up like 
happy again, you know. So, but I'll show you those. I'll, I'll show you those for sure. Um, and I can do that right now. This is what I mean about my cuttings or clippings or cuttings. And the, the cut has been healed. They've been feeding off of the leaves. So after I put this in the soil, it's going to be just like the one that I showed you earlier. Yep. And there they are. I just thinned those out. It was too much. Growing too much. So I just thinned it out. And these are what I have. Those are going to be rep repotted. And they'll be fine. No problem. Here's an Echeveria that I have beheaded the other day. And it is now growing roots. Not the other day. I didn't behead this the other day. I actually forgot. I forgot that I had this um, cut up from, I think it was two weeks ago. But look, not dying not dying at all but it did suck up some nutrition from there and this is also one of the ioniums that I cut or clipped so those two have been sitting there actually I forgot about them for about two weeks now this one has been <laughs> I just repotted this the other day but it's been sitting out there for about two weeks. And so is this. And this. This is the aeonium that I was talking about. Um, this has been sitting out forever. And the ghost plant also. And the propeller plant. This one has just started to get plumped up. But it was wrinkly like this. So... This one just started to plump up too. And this is the blue, blue chalk sticks. Those are also just now plumping out. It was, it was like this. It's been sitting out for like a month. And so is the elephant, elephant bush. Okay. Then. So thank you for coming thank you for watching and i hope you come watch make sure that you like you know the the icon down there that goes like this you'll be surprised a lot of people don't know what those things are for because i know because i have friends and my family so i i don't know what to do you know subscribe subscription is so for free you don't have to pay a thing it's youtube it's free but if you subscribe um you just make my day and uh if you like it would make my day even better and i'll be able to make more videos for you and succulents and if there's a topic that you want to know about um maybe an update or something i can't update on everything because i think some of them some of them died like i'm you know don't think that just because i take care of succulents that none of my plants that they do die so uh but i i you know i don't i don't stress out about because it's just the circle of life um you have to as you have to admit that and you just have to do the best that you can to take care of them because um that's all you can do and uh you can't fault yourself if something dies and, and give up because um we have to you have to keep going especially if you really love succulents succulents can make your life so much happier it can bring color to your garden uh, and, and i know that um, flowers can do that but flowers only come every once in a while if you have succulents in your garden it's all year round you see uh, pretty colors because when they're stressed out they're they, they even get they get more vibrant so i don't know why that is but you know if i'm stressed out i'm not vibrant at all and i love you guys Mwah. don't forget to watch till the end it helps me out thank you so much bye